Good morning. My name is Michael Adeyeri. Uh, I am the uh, co-founder and CEO of Busha. Um, before Busha, uh, I worked as a founding uh, software engineer at Jumia, uh, one of uh, Africa's largest e-commerce business. And uh, before that, I was a senior software engineer at Shoregift. Shoregift is the first uh, 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 retailer and aggregator of digital vouchers. And I'm Moyo Suresh Shodipo, CPO and co-founder at Busha. Prior to Busha, like Michael, our uh, careers have pretty much mirrored each other. Um, I was a founding DevOps engineer at Jumia when they launched in Nigeria. And after that, I led product and business development for Sure Gifts in Nigeria and Kenya. Yeah, so uh, fun fact, I've known Moyo for 14 years and uh, we've pretty much uh, been at the same company uh, up until 2019 when we founded uh, uh, Busha. Uh, we are really excited to be here uh, this morning to talk about uh, Busha's remarkable journey uh, as a leading cryptocurrency exchange in Nigeria. We will touch on the current state of uh, crypto regulations in Nigeria. Uh, as well as our uh, approach to compliance in Nigeria um, and basically our plans for the future. So, um, um, we founded Busha in 2019 uh, and have quickly grown to be one of the most popular crypto exchanges in Nigeria. Um, our platform allows uh, uh, users, over 500 million of them at the moment, uh, to store, buy and sell over 45 digital assets across uh, multiple uh, blockchains. Um, we, we also enable users to do more with crypto uh, by spending in-app on uh, uh, everyday utilities like uh, groceries, uh, mobile top-ups, as well as mobile data. Um, uh, since inception, we facilitated over $2 billion in uh, trade sales. We've raised uh, $7.5 million uh, from leading investors in the, in the industries, uh, such as Jump Capital, Cadenza, uh, Greenhouse, DCG, and, 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 and co. We, we, we have over 60 members at the moment who work across um, Nigeria, Kenya, and the United Kingdom. Um, recently, we launched our institutional product, Busha Commerce. Uh, this allows businesses quickly accept and settle payments. Uh, it is particularly tailored towards um, B2B uh, remittance and uh, B2C crypto acceptance, particularly uh, within the African uh, uh, market. So in the Nigerian market, it's a very peculiar one, and Nigeria is currently the leading country in terms of adoption of cryptocurrency in Africa, and we're part of the top 20 countries globally, and this is from the Chainalysis Global Adoption Index. Um, Nigeria is also the most populous African nation with about 200 million um, citizens, and the median age of Nigerian of the Nigerian population at the moment is 19 years old, and this is this is this is an indication of the kind of demographic of the users that we have. We have a lot of users that, are, so to say, youths. and it's something that sort of drives the adoption. You see, these people are trying to make payments or pay for things abroad and due to capital controls in the country, they need to make use of cryptocurrency to do these things. So for example, you're trying to purchase something from Amazon or eBay, you need to purchase cryptocurrency, use it to buy some sort of gift card um, that you can use to check out on that website outside the country. You might also see people that are also purchasing cryptocurrency for speculation in some very rare instances. And today they purchase cryptocurrency when it's at, say, 
$12,000, it goes up to $20,000. They're excited, everyone is happy. Yes, I've almost doubled my money. But the day that there's a bear market and that thing later drops from 30,000 to 15,000, that's when they're going to contact, reach out to our support staff and say, hey, what happened to my money? Why did it move from $100 to $50? So you have these kind of things and it just shows the kind of customers that we have um, that they want to be connected to. Um, in terms of the mode of transacting, um, something that's very, very commonplace in Africa and Nigeria at the moment is a lot of Africans engaging P2P transactions. And this is because um, a lot of African countries are not really receptive towards cryptocurrency at the moment. Um, there's not a lot of regulatory clarity and um, it's made a lot of people move from dealing with centralized exchanges to P2P transactions. And this P2P transactions means there isn't like proper, there isn't like proper um, transaction monitoring. So this, the, 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 the next thing that I would like to touch on is cryptocurrency regulation in Nigeria as a country. Um, at the moment, there's no regulation for cryptocurrencies in Nigeria. There's no regulatory framework. Although the SEC is really keen on um, regulating, they've engaged stakeholders like us from time to time. Even prior to when we launched in 2019, we started engaging the SEC as far back as 2018 on how we can come up with a regulatory framework for cryptocurrency in Nigeria. But the reason why the SEC's hands are sort of tied at the moment is because the CBN has restricted access to banking for cryptocurrency um, businesses and crypto affiliated individuals. So the SEC needs a sort of green light from the CBN in order to work together with players like us um, to regulate the space. Well, irrespective of this, um, Busha has taken it upon itself to be um, self regulated and self compliant. So from day one, we've always KYC dollar users, um, we've partnered with people like Chainalysis to make sure that we're understanding the kind of transaction flows that are flowing through the exchange and we understand the kind of use cases that these customers are using um, cryptocurrency for in Nigeria. But the CBNs, one of the CBNs major concerns is they, they believe, like a lot of people believe outside the crypto space that cryptocurrency is anonymous in nature and um, that's just like a widespread notion that it's anonymous and that's why um, the CBN is sort of wary of it. But we're constantly engaging them on this. And they're also scared that a lot of people are, like the last um, presentation mentioned, a lot of people are victims of scams in the cryptocurrency space. It's probably used for money laundering and terrorist financing. But the fact that we are self-regulated means that um, there's, con there, there's a way for us to see the kind of use cases that cryptocurrency is being used for when users are transacting on Busha. One of the unintended consequences of restricting access to banking by the CBN is that there isn't a lot of visibility um, in terms of the flows that these transactions are going from. So instead of a transaction going through a properly regulated or compliant cryptocurrency exchange, it's going through P2P exchanges. So there isn't like full monitoring of end-to-end -end from fiat to crypto and then back to fiat. All right, so uh, like Mayor said, we, we've been uh, self-regulated from the onset and uh, our approach to uh, uh, compliance first uh, business is anchored around three major activity streams, right? The first one being regulatory and law enforcement support. Uh, prior to uh, launching in 2019, like Moyo said, we actually engaged with regulators to so that they better understand our business, you know. Uh, uh, this helps to set it apart from, you know, this is a crypto, a crypto exchange, it's not, uh, we are not issuing tokens or selling tokens and all that because, uh, yeah. Another thing we, we did was that, uh, or we do currently, is that we provide a lot of uh, technical support and data. I mean, we are at the forefront of, uh, of this technology, so uh, we, we are in the best position to provide this data to them. This helps them to, to better understand the technology itself and the market in, uh, in, in, in general. Yeah. In addition, our 
compliance department uh, from, time to, from time to time uh, you, uh, interacts with uh, uh, agencies, law enforcement agencies, both locally and globally, uh, to make sure that uh, 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 illicit transactions don't go through Busha, uh, either originating or uh, terminating, uh, without any serious consequences, right? Uh, the idea is that um, with this collaborative approach, we are able to um, uh, um, um, address any concerns that may, that may occur during regulatory review uh, uh, processes. We've also seen instances where we support ongoing investigations. Uh, I was telling Moyo, Moyo yesterday, I'm sure we've gotten requests from some of the uh, agencies here that have come on the stage to speak about uh, addresses belonging to Busha and if we can help uh, them with identifying who owns this address. And I can tell you that uh, every time they've come, we've been able to provide sufficient information on uh, those addresses. You know? And um, yeah, the second one is that we provide friendly uh, uh, customer support and also um, educational resources. Uh, we, we uh, are the first exchange in Nigeria to provide um, life support. You know, customers can always reach out to our support team via mobile or web anytime, anytime, 24 hours, seven days a week to get help from real people. You know, this, this sets us apart from exchanges then who deploy bots. You know, so it's different when you are talking to a real person and you're talking to bots who gives generic answers, right? Um, we have an active blog uh, that touches on several aspects of cryptocurrencies, including uh, possible scams that we've seen, new ways that these scammers are, uh, uh, new techniques that these scammers are, are, are using. We, we all, in the, on the educational aspect, we also uh, went further uh, to provide a platform called uh, Not Sensible. Not Sensible is a platform that uses uh, comics, uh, podcasts, and stories uh, to teach about different aspects of uh, cryptocurrencies. You know, our goal at the end of the day is that if we can inform the population, if we can uh, uh, educate uh, everyone involved in crypto about everything going on, you know, we, we hope to uh, uh, prevent them from wasting time and also losing money. Uh, finally, uh, we do uh, uh, the KYC and uh, blockchain monitoring. You know, we've implemented a robust uh, internal procedures, right? Uh, some of these procedures are, are comply with global, um, global um, uh, uh, frameworks like the recently we used uh, EU's uh, market in crypto assets uh, uh, regulations. So the first one is that we keep customer balances and assets segregated from company funds, right? Which is very important these days after uh, the, the fallout of uh, FTX and some other exchanges, right? So we also make sure that we have enough capital to run our operations. Um, uh, we also um, take very important our IRM process. Uh, we do a lot of background uh, checks to make sure that everyone we're bringing in is, is of the highest uh, quality. Uh, we um, make use of the best tools available in the market, um, uh, mainly because we know regulations are coming. Like Moyo said, uh, there are not currently any regulations in Nigeria, but we've had several agencies uh, put out some form of uh, uh, draft, which uh, informs us that regulations are coming. So in order to stay uh, compliant, you know, we, uh, we make use of sophisticated tools for custody, as well as uh, uh, identity verification. Our, Onboarding process is very thorough and comprehensive, uh, such that we we we're able to get uh, sufficient data or details about these customers. Uh, we also make sure that we keep track of their 
behavior on an ongoing basis, that their transactional behavior on an ongoing basis. Uh, and um, yeah, um, for transaction monitoring on chain transactions, we, we use uh, uh, Chainalysis a lot, right? Uh, in fact, if you send money to Busha, right, on the custody level, there's an AML screening uh, that tries to check the addresses, uh, the addresses paying the gas fees, you know, against uh, a lot of all these sanctioned lists, right? So that's on the transaction level. But we also used KYT. We used KYT to build up um, uh, a risk score level for each user, you know. So, uh, yeah, so we used Janice to build up a risk score level and we're able to monitor each user. Once we start to notice uh, some suspicious activities, you know, we have KYT uh, for that. We have KYT to do in-depth analysis. Uh, yeah, um, I don't use it every. I don't use uh, KYT, but uh, I don't use the reactor. But from people who use it every day, I've heard a lot of uh, um, good things about it. Uh, how much in-depth you can track transactions, the sources. Um, yeah. So some of the some of the outcomes of this self-compliance that we've put upon ourselves is that we have created a reputation for ourselves in the cryptocurrency industry and also in the Nigerian space that they know that this crypto exchange, even though we are not regulating them, they are always receptive to law enforcement requests or receptive to any form of collaboration if they need our assistance. Um, and this has allowed us to have a friendly rapport with the regulators over time. So anytime there's a last week or I think sometime last week or late last month, um, there was a blockchain draft, blockchain draft that was introduced by the Nigerian government. We were part of the players in the space that were contacted to review this document. The framework that the SEC is intending to use, we're also part of, we're also in conversations with them. And this is because they already identify us as one of the responsible exchanges in Nigeria. And what this means for us in the long run is that all these internal processes that we've put in place has sort of prepared us that if tomorrow morning the regulators in Nigeria decide to regulate everyone in the space, we will not be caught on our ways because we already have KYC, we already have transaction monitoring, we already have Reactor and all these tools that we've put upon put into our processes. So if, if there's a need to become compliant or more compliant, we've already set ourselves to standards that are accepted globally. So there will be no imminent risk to um, our business. And we are also, this has also helped us to grow organically across different customer segments because people know that Busha is the place to be, Busha is the trusted space. And um, it has also helped us, um, this transaction monitoring that we've done has also helped us in terms of screening transactions like outgoing transactions. If a customer happens to be sending funds to uh, an address that we require to um, deem high risk, we can reach out to you and let you know, we've identified this address and it seems like it's a Ponzi scheme. You should be careful before doing this and doing that. Um, the next steps for us is expanding to, of course, other African countries, starting with Kenya, which we are currently in public beta. Um, we've been in operation in Nigeria for four years, since 2019. And right now, um, we're in public beta in Kenya, and we're also um, in the sandbox, currently engaged with the Kama in Kenya, that's the Capital Markets Authority, towards getting a license in Kenya. Um, this just further shows that we are always ready to work with regulators and we are always respectful of regulators and governments in different jurisdictions that we decide to operate in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>